Okay, um, good morning. Well, it's been a long time since I've done one of these. On the pinball arcade forums, there's a, there's this uh, questionnaire that you can take. Uh, it's where uh, you're rating all the tables that are on pinball arcade from one to 10. Um, per I mean, as obvious as it might sound, one is worse, 10 is best. I figured out, since it, since I haven't done one of these in a long time, and plus, they've added some new games since then, I figured it's all pretty overdue for uh, one of these. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go down, go down the entire quiz, for lack of a better word, or, never mind, found it, survey. I'm just going to go down the entire survey, and rate them, and... Uh, try to give a description on them. Um, some of these I'm probably gonna have better answers than others. Um, still, some of these, uh, some of these newer ones like Bonsai Run, and um, there might be some others that I've uh, only played a few times. I'll still give it a rating, but it's not gonna be a super accurate rating, or it's only gonna be based on me playing something only a few times. So. Without further ado, let me get started. And Adam's family, um, I'm still gonna say, I'm still gonna say three. The whole appeal of the game is lost on me. I don't, I don't get it. Um, more so since uh, probably gonna be a recurring theme throughout a lot of these other tables. It doesn't have a ball save. So, the the beauty and splendor of the table, it... I mean, especially when the ball ball drains three times in a row. You know. Where's the splendor at? I mean, I only lasted maybe about a minute on this table. You know, sounds to me like the devs wasted their effort on this one. So, probably an unpopular opinion right here, but... On it like I see it. Um, Al's Garage Band. Haven't really played it much. It's, it's a ghetto table. Uh, from the sounds to... It just... The whole thing looked kind of jimmy rigged. I mean, I get that it uh, it was made from an indie company. One of Gottlieb's kids. I don't know. Alvin B and Company, I think it's called. So kind of an indie kind of an indie company, but even then, it, I wasn't really impressed with it. I mean, I like, crazy as it might sound, I like it more than Adam's family, but still not, nothing to make me go, oh, wow, or anything. Um, Attack from Mars, I'll probably give it a seven. It's got a pretty decent ball save on it, so I could actually get something going. Uh, plus, uh, ramps aren't that hard to hit. Loops aren't that hard to hit. Um, when in doubt, go for the center shot. So, it, you got options on this one. Uh, bonsai run. Uh, probably gonna... I've only played this a few times. But based on it... Four. It... Like I said, I've only played it a few times, but... A lot of times, it's got... The ball's got weird, tricky caroms and stuff, and that that game up in the back box uh, didn't really impress me at all. So it it so yeah, it's getting a four. Uh, Big hurt, same thing. Played it a fair amount of times, but it just this here nothing I can really put my finger on. Nothing specific. It's just I didn't really care for it much. Uh, big Shot. One of my faves right here. And like I said earlier, you're probably going to hear me complaining about a lack of a ball save on a lot of these tables. Um, you know, before you tell me, buck up, little camper, or suck it up, buttercup, well, I'm here to tell you, this is one table that does not need one. If, for one, the table is totally clear visibility. You can see the whole thing. It isn't like, say, 
Adam's Family, Creature from the Black Lagoon is probably another one. Uh, Twilight Zone is probably the biggest culprit. Just all sorts of toys and gizmos and other sort of junk all over the place that can obscure the ball. Um, Alice Garage Band. Now that I think about it, probably a temporary rating, but I'm knocking it down to three for this reason. Um, a big time turn off with me is uh, in the return lanes, just before the flippers. They got pictures there that obscures the ball. It makes it very hard for me to get my timing down. Or I don't see the ball coming down the flipper till the very last second. It throws me off my uh, throws me off the rhythm. So, so yeah, that. So, big shot, one of my faves. The entire table is visible. Um, and the premise of the table is very simple. Take down all the drop targets, then the eight ball. Preferably in that order. Uh, black hole. Uh, love hate relationship with this thing. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna give it a five. Like, but this here. Well, like, because it's such a love hate relationship with this table, I'll go ahead and just give it a null for the moment. There's a, uh, there's stuff they do right. There's stuff. There's things they do wrong with this. So, ah, screw it. Five. I don't. I don't like the fact that uh, the lower play field. If you can't take down a bank of drop targets when it's down there, and the ball drains, it drains. You lose the ball. Most other games aren't like this. Like hot at house, the ball drains a lower level. It just comes up in the main floor. Um, that said, I think it's probably one of the first tables where drop targets have to be taken down in order. I don't recall any other tables that were like that around this period, like 1980. So, uh, moving right along, Black Knight. It's definitely a nine. Um... I think the uh, overall scoring is a little low for it, but that might also be there to entice you to keep three balls in the play field as much as possible because that's where triple scoring comes from. Kind of a little itty bitty nitpick, but it's still a good, still a good table. This is one of these tables here that I played when I, was, I played in real life when I was a little kid, so I've got some history with this. Uh, Black Knight 2000. Other than the music, I mean, the music's pretty cool. Uh, one of my viewers, when I stream this table, it's her all-time favorite table. She loves it when I play this. So, but overall, other than the music, um, I probably would have given it a 6 or 7. But because of the music alone, I gave it an 8. Black Rose, I'll click. Black Rose, 10. Bar freaking nut. It, that is, it's one of those where I'll just, everything came together. Um, but now that I think about it, I feel like an Indian giver here, but uh, one big drawback, one big glaring weakness on Black Rose is the video modes. They are freaking god-awful. Like, they, you don't even need them in there. So, it kind of detracts from it. Uh, Bone Busters, two. What in the Sam hell were they trying to do with this table? It, it's like freaking abstract art or something. Not to mention, uh, not to mention the speak and spell type of uh, voices. It, that's very off-putting. I mean, I mean, late 80s. I mean, surely they could have, they could have done a better job of that. Uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula. Giving that an, I'm giving that an eight mainly because uh, I'm in a good mood. This is one of these tables that, when playing when playing it on pinball arcade, I have to set it to four player, just to stand a chance. So, but that aside, one of my probably just one of the favorite things to love about this table is 
getting three multi balls and hearing thirty million. It's that's probably one of the reasons I gave it a freaking eight right there, just to get the three ball multi ball and hear that. It's flipping awesome and trying to do that as often as possible. So it's getting an eight from me. Aside from that, the table's a pain in the ass, and the, the ball saver only lasts about five seconds. So. Uh, Cactus Canyon. Six. Um, at least on Pinball Arcade, super weak flippers. So, I think it was, uh, I think it's especially around the tips of the flippers. If you hit the ball with the tips, it's basically a beach ball. Otherwise, it's pretty much like Medieval Madness, except with a Old West theme. Uh, Cactus Jacks. I've, I'll give it a 9. Um, like Bram Stoker's Dracula, I have to set this to poor player, because the ball drains like crazy. But otherwise, I love the polka theme. I love the goofy offbeat uh, Cactus theme. But not much more to say about that. Centaur. Um, I really want to give it a nine, but I there's I don't know what it is. Something keeps me from getting it to a nine, but an eight. Just on the fact that, unlike most other tables, due to the way it plays and the mechanics involved, I have to play slow on this. I'm primarily a slapper player. I am to pinball what a slugger is to baseball. I swing for the fences. Like, I don't... Like, sluggers don't really look at pitches or anything like that, whereas... Whereas I'm pretty much like that with pinball. I don't... I don't trap the ball that much. I don't cradle it. I don't stand there for 10 to 15 seconds and pretending to be Karate Kid in my mind going... <laughs> or anything like that. You know, before making the shot, I just hit it. You know, but I do basic stuff when... I do basic stuff, you know, like if you want to... You hit the ball early, you'll... You want to hit the ball early, you'll, you know, pull the ball that way. Or if you hit the ball late, you know, you'll push the ball this way. You know, that kind of thing. I do that. You know, I change the timing of my flip to where I want the ball to go, but... I'm not a big trailer. But this table here is... One, is was one of the exceptions. You know, drop targets have to be taken down in order. Um, there, the target on the upper right, there's a, I don't know what you have to do to get it, but there's a flashing point value that goes up, increases in value. You have to t hit the target when the value is at the highest, so there's timing involved. So, yeah. Uh, center grade 37. Give it a seven. Um, I love the lighting. Uh, just the, the strobing lighting every time you hit a hit a roller. Dee -dee 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 -dee. The lights go back and forth. Uh, but otherwise, mm, nothing I can really put my finger on. But something keeps me from giving it an eight rating. Central Park, ten. That bar brick and nut. Um, Weird as it might sound, I consider it the ultimate beginner's table. You, just, you have to learn to nudge. You have to learn to manipulate the ball. Um, to me, I think are necessary tools for a, any kind of pinball player, especially on pinball arcade. In real life, where at least the tables that I've been on at the bowling alley I went to once, you could go, <sighs> you could breathe on the table and your wrist tilting it. But in pinball arcade, ka -ching, ka -ching, ka -ching, ka -ching, you can just hit that analog stick. You can do a certain certain timing on it, and it'll never tilt. So, especially on... So, learning to nudge the table is vital on this table. You know, and it's also the only other table I can think of uh, where keeping it in the bumpers is very important. I mean, most other tables i played, the bumpers are just there as an afterthought. You don't really need them. Maybe as, as part of a mode or something. You hit the bumpers 100 times, and it super jets, you know, you know, that's about it. But 
Not Central Park. Uh, bumper play is essential. Uh, champion Pub. Worst outlanes ever. 90% of the time, it always goes in the outlanes. Uh, but as far as everything else, it's basically medieval madness with a Irish boxing pub theme. So. Uh, Circus Voltaire. Oh, oh, oh. Bringing that down to a four. Uh, reason being, this table, it's a good table. Otherwise, I like the voices. Um, the overall feels cool. What I don't like is the, uh, the, uh, the loop behind the ringmaster's head. If you hit it from right to left, you better have the right nudge at the right time. Otherwise, the ball goes straight down the middle. To me, that's a design flaw. I, no table no table should have something like that where your drain is inevitable or where you where you're forced to avoid making a certain shot because you know it's got to drain afterwards so to me that's a design flaw uh class of 1812 probably the same thing for um i like the theme one thing i don't i you get it's a it's inconsistent shooting. It's it's what I peg it down as. Because if I hit a... I need to be able to hit the ball in more or less the same spot every time. But there's times where uh, on this table here, if I hit a ball early, and like say, on the tip of the flipper, it should be going up around this area here. Not up. Not, not this way. Whereas... Class 1812 has that issue. You know, it's like, you know, it's, at times it's actually more more effective to just backhand backhand the ball to where you want it to go than it is to forehand it. You know, I mean, I ain't right. Uh, creature from the Black Lagoon. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause a moment. I'm gonna go get a glass of water because uh, my throat's getting dry right now. I don't normally talk this much, so this is going to be a brief AFK. I'm going to go get some water. I'll be right back. Okay, much better. Um, creature from the Black Lagoon. Uh, torn between four and three. I'll just say four. I kind of made the same, same complaint about uh, Adam's family up on top. Excuse me. But uh, it, there's too much junk, plus the whole play field. There's like not, not much to work with. You got got a right right ramp like right here. You got like targets and center stuff like right here. It's like very cramped. And not to mention, I think... I think there's a ball save, but it only lasts like maybe five seconds or so. With, it's pretty much gone by the time the ball gets down to the flippers. So, hardly any input. It's kind of a waste of a feature. Uh, cue ball wizard. Uh, six. I like the table. But it's it just the overall theme. It's, it's good, but not great. I guess probably the easy way to explain it. It's got a nice little quirk. It's got a nice little uh, feature. The big white ball, you, you, you know the, you know, you know cue ball, that kind of thing. Pretty neat, pretty nice touch, but not really enough to make it a seven or an eight or or a nine. Uh, Cyclone. Yeah, I'll make I'll make it an eight, mostly on nostalgia. But this is another table that uh, I grew up with when I was a teenager. I used to play this fairly often, so 
So there's a nostalgia factor. Um, aside from that, it's got a really goopy skill shot. I don't, and to this day, I still don't know exactly where you're supposed to plunge. You, just, you, you plunge light, it still sails over the whole skill shot apparatus thingy. You know, you plunge too much, I mean, whether you plunge too much or not enough, I can't find the sweet spot on it. It's like no matter what you do, either goes it goes in the first slot or it just rolls right over the whole thing. Uh, diner. I'm going to say that. Not to mention, uh, I want to say a little bit racist. You know, they got Margaret Thatcher in there. They got... They got a me some Mexican in there. I want a chili and a root beer. You know, they're all acting stereotypical. I'll have the iced tea and the Frankfurt. You know, that kind of thing. It is. So that and. That and like, um. Like some of these other tables, it's not. I don't think it's really one specific thing that makes it suck. It's just the whole thing in general. Uh, Doctor Who. And I'll say Doctor Who, Master of Time. Mainly the theme of the table goes over my head. This is one of those where, or not the theme of the table, but uh, the show goes over my head. I mean, I've tried watching, uh, I think I tried watching the very first episode, the black and white early 60s one. And I'm just looking at it like, I don't get it. So. But, uh. As far as table play itself, it's pretty much what's carrying the five rating. But like I said, it I guess, like I said, like this whole thing it just whoosh. Uh Doctor Dude Nine. This is But yeah, it I kinda I think the last time I did this I rated it the same as uh, Black Rose. I think I gave both of them 10s. But after playing them more often and seeing more, you know, seeing more flaws or whatnot, um, I just gave it a 9. But again, this is, a, this is one of my favorites right here. I guess uh, the big knock on it is uh, the, the music and the voices, they're too short. And they're looped, so if you can't, if you can't go travel through modes quickly, you're gonna go nuts with hearing the same repetitious sound, or the same repetitious music over and over and over. It's gonna get on my nerves. Uh, Earthshaker. Think I up uh, eight. I think I gave this one a low rating last time I did this, but. Once I started figuring out what I'm supposed to be doing, you know, where to make my shots and whatnot, it actually, uh, it climbed up. Um, it still got the big time drawback of the right out lane. I mean, I've been lucky a few times that it, it'll go on the right in lane from time to time, but not that much. Basically, if it goes over there, it goes out. So, that's basically a championship pub style out lane over there. Um, eight ball deluxe. Gave it a seven. Just like Cyclone, this is another table I grew up with when I was a kid. But um, uh, later on, probably um, probably Fathom as well. Probably go ahead and I'll give it a. I'll rate them the same because uh, weird as it might sound, to me these two actually play almost alike, despite the fact that the whole setup and all that is totally different. It plays the same to me. It, but like I said, it's hard. It's hard to put it into words. It's more of a feel thing than anything. Uh, El Dorado, one of my faves right here. Uh, this, 
This is um, this is probably what I call kind of like Big Shot. Now that I think about it, um, I call it a relaxation table. Probably uh, this one here probably more so than uh, than Big Shot. I mean, just you got all this this big old wide open area from the flippers all the way up. I mean, the ball goes up, comes down. You can easily see it easily see it coming. Uh, and plus, the premise is very really simple. Take down the drop targets. There's no... There's no... Hit this ramp three times and then lock the ball over here and then... Then hit these bumpers 20 times and then after that, launch the ball over to this saucer, which activates this mode. Then you have to go over and hit this over here four times. And then after you do that, you gotta like... You gotta like uh, make the ball travel to the end lane. Then you gotta like go over here in this ramp. Gotta hit the ramp over here three times. And after that, you gotta go. You gotta go up around and back. You gotta make sure you get all three rollovers. And you gotta get back in the sauce. And you have to. You know. <clears throat> it's nice to be able to relax for once with a table like this. El Dorado City of Gold, on the other hand, sucked. Tell them I don't. Two. Um, it's the play. The layout is just like El Dorado. Um, one big thing is uh, there's much greater progression in El Dorado because unlike City of Gold, uh, El Dorado's drop targets don't reset after every ball. So if you um, lose a ball with only one drop target left, that one drop target is still going to be there for you on the next ball. Not like City of Gold, so... If, uh, you, if the ball drains when there's just one target left, too bad, so sad. Whoosh, they all come back up again, so. Not to mention, it's a very, 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 very noisy game. Noisy and repetitious. Um, far worse than Dr. Dude, because... Because that all there is on here is just one tune. That's it. It loops over and over. Man, that gets on my nerves. Um... Elvira and the Party Monsters. I gave that a... I'll give that a 7. I... I like the... I mean, I like the theme. It's an above average table, but it's not... It's good, but not great. So I'll just say that. Um, one thing I do have to say about this table, though, it has uh, probably the safest... The safest ramps I've ever played on. A lot of other tables, if the ball doesn't go all the way up the ramp, <laughs> you're screwed, buddy. Straight down the middle. Not on this table. If it doesn't go all the way up, it usually goes all the way down right right towards uh, one of your flippers. So it's, this, the ramps on here are very safe. At 14, Tom Cap, 8. And just like some of these others, I used to play this game when I was a teenager. It's a very fast table. Um... Probably one glaring weakness on this is it needs a ball save. Cause you know, especially if it I mean the ball the ball travels pretty quickly on this one. And a lot of times it could just fly right by you or go right into one of the out lanes. And a lot of times you don't see it coming. And um and I have um I have done a four player version on this table too. It doesn't matter. It it isn't like say Ram Stoker's Dracula, at least with a four, four player in that game, I could still get somewhere. You know, whereas on here, you pretty much go nowhere fast. You might as well just set it to one player. But good table otherwise. Uh, Fathom, uh, same as the 8-ball deluxe. Game out of 7, good but not great. Uh, Fireball. Um, 9, not because it's my favorite per se. But I think they're, um, this is one of the first tables I can think of. You know, it's probably one of the most revolutionary tables I can think of right here. As far as I know, it's one of the first tables to have a skill shot. Um, it's also, I think, one of the first tables to have a spinning plate that uh, Whirlwind would have later on in uh, No Good Gophers. They, too, would have a spinning plate that if the ball landed on it, it would just spin on the plate and get thrown off somewhere. This was one of the first tables that had it. And it's also one of the first tables where 
the flippers, you can bring them in close so the ball does makes it impossible for the ball to drain. So, so it's uh, to me it's a pretty revolutionary table right there. Uh, as far as as far as me playing it, uh, like Fathom Eight Ball Deluxe, good but not great. Uh, firepower. Giving that sucker a three. Uh, especially considering that uh, it's got a big time waste of a feature and the kickback. It starts off turned off. And um, the way they... It's, you're supposed to take down... There's two banks of three, uh, three stand-up targets. If you take one down, that triggers a kickback. Um, but the problem is, there's been times where I've taken out the entire bank or take out all six of them and it still doesn't come up. Well, at least when I'm under the way I'm understanding it, you have to take down that the three bank in one ball. If you um uh, if you take down one target and you the ball drains, I think for some reason the game doesn't understand that. So even if you do take down the other two, the kickback still doesn't kick in. And if, if, worst case scenario, if you say, take down one target in this bank here and one target in this bank here and the ball drains, you're basically not going to get a kickback at all. So, you have to take down a whole bank in one, on one ball. So, that, that's a feature that never should have been put in to begin with. Um, but, and on top of that, more often than not, the ball drains over there in the left kickback. So, Really adding insult to injury. But I'd probably say the one upside to it, kind of like Black Knight, it has very, it has a very balanced in and out lane. There's no little baby buggy bumper that's between them that makes the ball bounce around. Practically a 50-50 proposition. If the ball lands right on the, on the medium between in and out, I can tilt the, I can touch the table a certain way and get it to go on the in lane every time. I couldn't do that on any other table because you got that little baby buggy bumper. You do that on numerous occasions I've done this. Try to nudge it into the in lane. It bounces off that baby buggy bumper and goes into the out lane instead. So. Uh, firepower 2. Way better than Firepower 1. Um, but... I'll go ahead and give it an 8. So, I mean, it's a pretty good table. Um, it's also got a unique quirk in that it, the left ramp is actually easier to backhand it, to backhand the shot, than it is to forehand, backhand it with the left flipper than it is to try to forehand it with the right flipper. I don't don't really recall any other table where it has that little quirk. Except maybe except maybe probably class of eighteen twelve, but I mean that But I mean that the ball pretty much goes it practically flies off in a random direction no matter which way you hit that thing. Um moving along, uh fishtails. I'll just give it a go ahead and give it a seven. I love the theme. Some of the lines they do on here are just freaking hilarious. Um, aside from that, this is another table that needs a ball save. And plus uh there's too many uh there's too many little post bumpers throughout the thing, so it's too pun it's a very punishing table. Not to mention the cap the ball that's right smack dab in the middle is very difficult to hit because the the gap, the gate, for lack of a better word, that you have to hit the ball with is just barely the width of the ball. So you have to hit it dead on. You can't hit it a little to the left or a little to the right. You have to hit it straight on. And plus you got little uh, little post bumpers in front of it. If you don't do that, and Bounces off in a random area. Um, Flight 2000. Um, 
kind of like Big Shot, except faster. Uh, you know what? I'll give that one an A2. Now that I think about it, um, there's the same comparison here with Big Shot. I think all you have to do, unlight the lights, take down the drop targets in reverse order, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, lock three balls, and you got multiple. That's the goal of the table. Very simple. Um, they kind of get a little crazy with the text. Like, there's a, you'll, there's a lot of uh, lights on there that have little text descriptions. Maybe if I was playing this table in real life, I'd give it a higher rating. But in order, in order for a, in order for free look mode on this table, I have to either a buy the pro version, the pro version of this table that allows a free look mode, or b get all the achievements, regular and wizard achievements on this table just to be able to do that, which I think is a, if it, it's what I call an infinity plus one achievement. By the time you get it, you probably got so damn good at the table, you don't even need it. So, not much point in having it. But, uh, moving along. Funhouse, give that a six. And, like some of these others, this is another table I used to play back when I was a teenager. And it, this was not... I mean, I like... I like the voices, music, and sounds. The play style itself, eh. It's like um, it's like pretty much it's it, you pretty much required to master the, yeah, the hidden hallway shot. I think that's what it's called. It's a little 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 corridor where you lock your balls and you get your extra balls. You gotta you gotta master that shot because you're gonna be having to aim for that a lot. If you can't do that though, it's gonna suck. Not gonna be a fun table then. So I, I mean, too much, too much on the table is centered around that little shot. So, uh, genie, I'll give it a five. It, it's too much. It's one of the, it, this, like some of these others, I can't really put my finger on it. It's just kind of a eh, table. Not to mention it's got moon physics. Like they need to, they need to make the table a little more steep or something, so the ball actually comes down faster and harder. Because basically you're batting around a beach ball on this table. So, uh, getaway high speed. I'm giving that a null rating. Reason being, I've only played this maybe once or twice. There's a, there's a song on this table called um, LaGrange by ZZ Top. And if I played this table, I wouldn't ex be able to export my video to YouTube. <clears throat> but, uh, because despite the fact that that song is just a digitized version that's part of a pinball machine, YouTube will still recognize it as a standalone song and flag my video as copyright. Which I think is stupid on their part and you know, definitely not something I want, so I have to skip this game whenever it comes up. Oh, and I forgot to mention, um, when I stream Pinball Arcade, I always play random tables. And unless I have a very good reason for doing so, um, I don't play the same one twice. So, so then I, if I get this, I skip it. So I'm giving that an all rating. Ghostbusters, same thing. I tried to play this one time. It's too graphics intensive for my computer. My computer practically slows to a crawl if I have to play this, so these two are getting null ratings. Uh Gladiators. I'll give it an eight. But only because there is no seven point five. I've only, but I've only played this table a few times. Um I like the uh I mean I like the Dragon Slayer theme. It's got kind of a Dungeons and Dragons theme to it. It's one of my all-time favorite pinball machines, even though I haven't played it in many, many years. So it's got that going for it. Um, the um, the catapult ramp is kind of a neat, kind of a neat quirk. It's a it's a ramp that rotates back and forth. So it's kind of neat. It drops off and 
where the ball lands, nobody knows. But that's all I gotta say on that. Moving right along, going nuts. Give that a three. Better yet, or worse yet, depending on how you look at it, I'll give it a two. This is um. I mean, first off, you're hit with a double whammy on this. It's a timer-based game, and it's based on the standard three and out that all other tables have. I think it should be one or the other, but not both. Um, not to mention, it's pretty much a genie table. It's got moon physics. And three, because of that, they got a bank of drop targets right smack in front of the flippers. So... If you're trying, if I'm trying to make a certain shot that's at the back of the table, if it's at the back of the table, back of the table, and I can't get back there because I keep hitting that bank of drop targets. Well, the timer's gonna run out, and either the timer's gonna run out, or the ball's gonna drain straight down the middle. I mean, I think the table tried to do too much, and it ended up ended up failing at everything. So, give them that one a two. Uh, bugger! And this too was another table that I used to play. Um, this here was back. I played this back when I was a little kid, but I only played it maybe once or twice. That's it. But it, it's. But this is one of those where, plus I, think the big one for me on this here is a. Uh, is the first. Possibly the only table I can think of where uh, there's blood. If you look close on the back glass, like it looks like some girls being sacrificed to Gorgar, you can see like blood dripping down the uh, down the stone slab. It's like it's got a real satanic theme to this table. It's like whoa. So, I mean, based on that alone, I'm not giving that sucker an eight. Um, but gameplay wise, it's actually pretty entertaining. I mean, but kind of like Big Shot. There's a little bit more complexity to this, but it's a little bit more complicated than Big Shot, but the premise isn't that hard to grasp. You know, again, hit, hit the guard targets and the guard targets. Preferably taking down both banks at the same time. Um, you gotta hit the yellow you gotta hit the yellow targets too, but otherwise there's, it's not a rock, there is no rocket science involved. Um, Harley Davidson third edition. Unlike Getaway, I don't, I don't know. Okay, I remember now. Given this one a three, the gameplay itself is average. Uh, but the the voices really ruin it. But I've only played this on the PS4 version because back when I was up, uh, back when I was streaming this on my PS4, I don't think I was uploading any videos to YouTube. That I recall. But um, otherwise I don't play it. I don't play it now because for the same reason, the same reason I can't play the Getaway. Um, there's a lot of classic rock tunes on this. But again, I wouldn't be able to export my uh, stream video to YouTube. Because it'll get flagged for copyright just because of all the classic rock they play on this table. So, I get it. I gotta skip it. Haunted House. Uh, again... I'll give this an 8, if only because there is no 7.5. Uh, pretty fun table. Yeah, it's a pretty fun table. Um, I love the kickers. Especially when the, especially when the kickers kick back at you. Kick back at the flippers. I don't really recall any other tables that have that. I wish more tables would, though. Boy, that would make the table fun. Like kickers that kick back straight back at you, rather than off to the side or any or elsewhere. But otherwise, some pretty cool sound effects too, some cool music as well. Despite it being an early eighties table. 
Ah, uh, High Roller Casino. I'll give this one a four. Gameplay could be good. If, uh, kind of like Cactus Canyon, the flippers on this are fairly weak. So, your shot, you gotta hit the shots dead on perfect. Just to hit that sweet spot of the flipper, wherever the hell that is, that'll send the ball up the ramp or around the loop. Otherwise, beach ball. And the voices are kind of annoying too. Especially, uh, especially added to the fact that they're kind of lo-fi. Kind of like, uh, kind of like Al's Garage Band. It sounded like, uh, it sounded like they were done with a tin can. Um, high speed. And like some others. This was another table I used to play a lot when I was a kid. So, it gets a pretty high mark. Um, this is all one thing that definitely keeps this table from being a knight is um, there is no ball save on it. So, there's going to be a lot. I've had a lot of balls pew, go through the out lane or pink straight down the middle. And then a lot of times I don't see it coming. So, that's probably what keeps this from being a nine. Uh, hurricane. Uh, I'll give this one a five. One big, one big thing that mars this. This is another good table, but one thing that really mars it is the same problem that Taxi has. The ra the ball comes out of the ramps at random, at seemingly random speed. Or, or let me let me take that back. Once in a while, when the, the ball will come out of those ramps, pew, just zip past the flippers. Most other times, it just drops down like normal, but once in a while, the ball will just pew, shoot past the flipper. Oh, 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 what happened? You know. So, that gets uh, negative marks for me because of it. Uh, if not for that, probably would have gotten an 8, possibly even a 9 as well. Because it was a pretty good sequel to Cyclone otherwise. Uh, Indy 500. I'll give it a six. Uh, it, it's a meh table. Just a meh table overall. Overall, nothing really stood out. Plus, uh, cause added to the fact the fact that uh, NASCAR or NASCAR and auto racing in general, especially NASCAR goes over my head. Um, jackpot? Um, same as Haunted House. I'll give this one an 8, mainly because there is no 7.5. Um, plays a lot, a lot easier than Pinbot. Um, and there's a I think there's more to shoot at with the left flipper too. Whereas uh pinball, you, you might as well just take the damn pin you might as well just take the damn left flipper out. I mean But the only thing I use it for is uh hitting the uh, chest targets and that's about it. Uh Jack's open. If it's the one I'm thinking of I think it is this one here, just like Big Shot, and just like Big Shot, and um, there's probably others I forgot to mention, this is one table that does not need a ball save. And it's got a really unique feature. Gladiator 32 has, or Gladiator. Set of grade 32 also has it. There's there's uh, big gaps in the out lanes. Uh, basically, now that I think about it, A table like this should be perfectly suitable for a for a, for a slap chop slugger like myself, because uh, cradling the ball on this table is very dangerous. Like I said before, there's uh, gaps in the out lanes now. If you catch the ball and cradle it, and it starts rolling back, it's gonna roll out. So you basically you have to hit the ball off the flipper. And before I forget, let me head up to here to Centigrade. 
centigrade 37, I'll up that too. I just thought of that. But otherwise, uh, hitting drop tart, um, hitting the same print, same principle here as it is on a uh, big shot. Take down the drop targets. They add a little more complexity to this one though, because uh, it's um, to start with, you have to get rid of uh, you have to take down two jacks, three queens. I think it's um, two kings, three queens, and so on and so forth. But you have to make you have to hit specific drop targets. You can't just whoosh, wipe them all out. So, nice little quirk on that. It gets a nine from me. Judge Dredd, same thing. Flipping awesome music. But, uh, this is one of those that, um, they did almost everything right on here. Even the outlanes are unique. They're not just, they're not just traditional up and down outlanes. Uh, the right one goes up and like this. In order to drain, the ball has to come at it like this, not like this. It's a totally unique, I don't, I can't really recall any other table having that quirk. Um, I think the left out lane kind of has that too. But uh, the left out lane is kind of in the middle between the in lane and a, and a plunger shot on the left. The out lane's actually in the middle. So, nice quirk. Um, there's some stuff in there that's just funny as hell, so it's getting a nine from me. Uh, junkyard. Three. I think I gave, I think I gave this a fairly high rating, but uh, after playing it more and more, it has the worst video mode ever. And this is one of, it's so bad, I have to avoid getting the right, or I have to avoid getting the, I think it's the right ramp, or the right, the right shoot, the right passage, the right area. I have to avoid making that shot. Yeah, yeah, it's a ramp. It's called the dog ramp. I have to avoid making that shot just because I'm trying to avoid playing that damn video mode. It's awful. So, for that, for that, and the fact that the table does kind of drag a bit, it's getting a three. Um, the only upside to it is it's got probably the most, the hottest female voice on there I've ever heard. It, that, that angel voice. Oh. But aside from that, oh, and the guy, who, um, the guy who does the voice of the devil, here, some nice trivia here. The guy who does the voice of the devil and the voice of Judge Dredd is also the same guy that does the voice of the announcer on NBA Jam. Didn't know that. No. Boom, Chakalaka. That guy. He does the voices for these, uh, these as well. Like, hmm, cool. Um, last action hero. Seven. Uh, the, uh, above average. It's this is just an overall seven. It's a pretty good table to play, you know. But it, it's an it's an overall overall experience rating. Um, lights, camera, action. Uh, yeah, I'll give that a seven too. This could this table here could have been an eight or a nine, but like a lot of other tables. This one here needs a ball save. Um, same thing here. It. The ball that the ball takes some tricky caroms. It's got a uh, the left side of the the table. It's got a uh, these green targets. If you um, you hit the ball, the ball hits it. It bounces off in some random direction. It's, it makes it very hard to control. So so it's it's pretty much what keeps it from being an eight, possibly a nine. Um, they, it sounded like they used a speaking spell for this, but to be fair, unlike uh, unlike a, unlike Bone Busters, it, they only use a few lines, so it's not that bad. Uh, Machine Bride a Pinbot, I'll give it a five. It, this is probably my most inconsistent table. I mean, I've I've done abysmally poor on this fairly often. 
But I've also done flipping awesome fairly often on this too. Hey, there's like not much in between with this one. Uh, my biggest gripe on this, at least the initial high scores, getting the billion shot should not be a requirement to get the get the high scores. Maybe like when other people are playing the table and they're getting the, they're scoring the billion shot, you know, the billion plus I should say, when they're scoring it, like playing this in real life, if other people are playing it and they're getting the billion shot, sorry I'm sounding redundant, I'm still <laughs> working out in my head. You know, but in Pinball Arcade, the initial high scores are set at 1 billion plus, which shouldn't be. Because the thing of it is, is uh, I could probably spend at least 15 minutes not getting the billion shot and not getting near that score. Maybe 100 or 200 million and that's it. But getting the billion shot, I've done it in about 5-10 minutes. So I have a bit of an issue there. Uh, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein and giving that a 4. Eh. Not an evil table or anything like that, but it kind of drags. Um, for the um, the kind of score I get for the amount of effort I put into it is a little disproportionate. It's an awful lot of work for a measly score. I mean, I think I probably played I probably played the table as long as an hour, and maybe broke third place on the high scores. So it. Uh, Medieval Madness is going to be like a lot of other... Now, for those of you that are watching my previous stuff, like, Adam's Family 4? What the hell is this guy's problem, man? Oh, my God. Hmm. You know, he like Judge Dredd? Is this guy a retard or something? Well, for those that are saying stuff like that about my previous tables, well... You can take comfort in the fact that, like a lot of other people, I gave it a 10. They flippin' nailed it. They flippin' nailed it with this one. And this all this too was a table that I used to play a lot back when I was back when I was a teenager. Probably back in my late teens, early twenties, I played the crap out of this. Um, I and I nearly got kicked out of the kicked out of the arcade too that I was playing this at. I nearly got kicked out because it was frustrating as hell pressure as hell when the ball drained. Not because it's a difficult table, it's because I like this table so much, I didn't want it to stop. I wanted to keep playing, you know, I wanted to keep the ball going, I wanted to keep playing. You know, so the ball drains, fuck, boom, push the table back or something and get a warning from the attendee. You do that again, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Sorry. So. Uh, Monster Bash. I think I remember you giving it a three last time. I could probably tolerate the god-awful voices a little more. It's like they just hired them off the street. You know, la la! I just love that minty formaldehyde flavor. <gasps> Being in Tom for 300 years, 3 billion years hurts my butt! You know, it's... You know, I mean, they, they could have done better with that. It's, really detracts from the rest of the gameplay. The rest of the gameplay is pretty cool. The table's pretty cool. But it just, the voice is really bringing it down. No fear, dangerous sports. Seven. Um, just like fish tails, I could have easily given this an eight, possibly a nine, but there are way too many of those little post bumpers between each uh, ramp and loop shot. Um, I think it's too punishing a table. You missed a shot. The ball is just going to bounce off of some random random uh, location. So. Uh, no good gophers. Uh, just the voices and sound effects alone are flipping awesome. This is one of those tables that... This is one of those tables that I'll often sing along with. Like, you know, I'm singing along with the gophers. If balls are meant to fly, they'd have wings. And, Stuff like that. Oh, impressive. That kind of thing. And to be fair, Adam's family, I'll go ahead and up that to four. For, for that reason, this is another one of those tables that I can actually sing along with. Um, and if you ever catch me streaming, 
more often than not during like thing multi ball. Every chance I get, I, I see thing, I always follow along. You'll always see me do that. So I I upped it from three to four for that reason. Uh, Paragon. See going nuts. It's trying to do too too. It's trying to do too many things at once. This is in dire need of a ball save right here. Just to give you a few moments to figure out what the fuck you're supposed to be doing on the damn thing. Pardon my French. Kind of a sore spot. Uh, party zone. Same thing here. Just on the music, voices, voices and sounds, I'll give it an 8. Gameplay, eh. Um, it's also got a, one of the most cool, one of the cool things is, uh, it's actually pretty fun even when the ball drains. Because even when the ball drains, you don't get wah, 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 or anything like that. You get you get a pop like, doo, 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 doo. he scores! You get that, so I mean, I mean, so I mean, it kind of, you know, kind of really takes the sting out of losing, losing your ball. So. Hmm. And, uh, on Party Zone, I have seen this, um, I have seen the live-action version of this table on YouTube. If that were the case, I would have given this probably like a three or a four. Um, one big thing Pinball Arcade has that the, the table I saw doesn't is, um, the DJ. I mean, his mouth actually opens and closes whenever he talks, you know. Throws your fame, Dave! You know, like that, but whereas the real live version that I saw, nothing. It's like he's a ventriloquist or something. Like, mouth doesn't move at all. Really detracts from the table. Uh, Phantom of the Opera. Same thing here. Excuse me. Just overall, this is another table that is in dire need of a ball save. Yeah, but it's just an overall suckiness. It wasn't like, not like, it wasn't like one feature really stood out. I kind of like the music. kind of like the opera. Extra ball! But that's about it. Uh, Pinbot. I'll give it a... Hell, wait, oh, I'm dropping that sucker down. Flashback. Giving that one a... Giving Pinbot a three. And yes, this was another table I used to play when I was a teenager. But uh, this is another one. Kind of like Junkyard. Got to keep the ball out of the freaking bumpers. Because a lot of times it, it comes out of the bumpers pew, straight into the left out lane. And there really isn't much I can do about it because of the ball's trajectory. I'd have to nudge the crap out of, I'd have to nudge the crap either nudge it several times up or down or have the time and up, up nudge at just the right time so the slingshot hits the ball upwards or hit nudge down at just the right time so it knocks the ball down and off the baby buggy bumper that it is, that's over there and hope it goes in the end lane. So, I I shouldn't be forced to avoid shots on that table. So, design flaw. Ah, pistol poker. Played it a few times, but just like a Alice Garage fan, it's a ghetto table. I mean, I wouldn't... This I don't know the name of the company, but it's another Indian company. Um... I... I mean, if you're an indie company, I would definitely wouldn't expect pinball magic coming out of you. I wouldn't expect a beautiful, grand, glorious table when you're on a limited budget or anything like that. But I think they could have done better. But on the other hand, I don't couldn't really think of what. At the very least, better sounds and voices. Like I said, it's a, it's a ghetto table. Uh, Red and Ted's Roadshow. Give that one a seven. It's. I know one thing that really. I mean, I like the voices. I like the voices and. Got it. And I'm not a fan of country music, but the country music works for the theme of that table. So there's that. Um. I know one thing that definitely mars it, is uh. The the skill shot. It's like he, 
they need to where you need a where you need to punch the skill shot they need to move that part up a little bit up and away from the away from the plunger a little bit because it's like you don't you take like you hardly need to punch the ball at all like like this like that's it like very little to just a little tiny bit it, it's actually a lot harder than it looks but but yeah um there was something else that really marred the table oh the left out lane it's like i often have to risk i often risk two tilt warnings sometimes tilting the table out entirely just to get the ball away from that damn left out lane so well, that's it on that uh rescue 911 this table should not have existed uh terrible concept if you ever played it uh the scenarios you go through stuff like help there's a bunch of miner there's a bunch of miners trapped in the mine over there okay so you're in you're in mine rescue mode so what ha what happens when the ball drains i'm get i mean so i'm i'm guessing the mine collapses and they all die or or help i'm trapped I'm trapped. I'm surrounded by fire and trapped in my car, and I have my kids with me. So, what happens if the ball drains in the out lane? Does the car, does fire reach the car? The car blow up, and they all burn to death? I mean, I, that's what I think was what happens. I mean, so I mean, something like that. That they should never have done this. Uh, couple that with the fact that the left return lane, I think the right one as well. They did. They made the same mistake on there. They did with uh, Alice Garage Band. They obscure the return lane, so I can't see a damn thing. I can't see when the ball's coming down, so it really messes with my timing. Usually, usually my uh, my flip is a panic flip because I don't, I can't see the ball until it's right on my flipper. So, it's, uh! so, ah, uh, Ripley's believe it or not, I, yeah, I'll, I'll move that up to three. I found out recently that you, I think you can skip cutscenes on this. This is one of the things that really drug down the, drug down the table. Um, I think the ball has kind of a, kind of a genie aspect to it too. It's practically moon physics. Uh, but it, aside from that, it just, the voices are kind of annoying. It's like they used, uh, they hired one guy off the street to do all of them. Donkey Date Mine. Today, we'll be visiting Antarctica. I love gravestones. Donkey Date Mine. You know. Woof, woof, woof. So that really, that really ruins it for me. Uh, Safe Cracker. Um. I kind of have mixed reactions. I like the candy voice. Don't care for who did the Chicago guy. For all I know, it could have been the guy that did the uh, voice of the announcer in the uh, NBA Jam. But I don't, I don't know. But the yes, sparkle. It's kind of annoying. I think we could get some more time. That kind of grates on me. I mean, plus um, uh, kind of like Bob's I run. Having the uh, sorry game in the back glass, nothing I can put my finger on, but it's kind of a minus with me, kind of a turn off. Um, I do, however, like the fact that it's a timer-based game, and not a, it's a timer-based game only. Like you can keep draining balls over and over, but as long as you have time left, you can still keep playing. Unlike going nuts, where both can happen. Um, moving along, scared stiff. And so, and this was another table I used to play a lot. Used to play a lot back in my late teens, early 20s, in fact. Scared Stiff and Medieval Madness were in the same arcade together, so I often played both. One thing I really loved about Scared Stiff was the ball save. It, it was generous with it. You had um, 30 seconds to almost a full minute on the ball save. So just that alone, 
just that alone gave me gave it a nine rating. They, they, you know, they actually gave you a chance to get something going on the damn thing. You know, because I mean, especially especially in this day and age, where we have so many options now. I mean, hey, I'll play this table here. The ball goes pip, 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 three times down the middle. Oh, hell, I'll go play scared stiff over here. We got a thirty second ball save. I mean, every table these days should have a ball save now. You know, and no, it doesn't have to be a five-minute ball save or anything like that. No, you don't have to care about me or anything like that. But, you know, 30 to 60 seconds to me isn't really a whole lot to ask. You know, enough to, for me to get something going. This is especially true if I've never played the table before. I'm not going to learn much if the ball is just going <coughs> to straight down the middle three times. I mean, I ain't going to learn much, you know. You know, I, you know, screw this table. You know, it's especially true when you have a, you have something like Adam's family, or something where you put a lot of work into it. You know, all the artwork, all the props and gadgets and gizmos and what, all the stuff you put into it, but you don't have a ball save. You know, you don't have a ball save in there, and the game's over in less than a minute. I ain't playing it. You've just wasted all that effort, Mr. Depp. You know, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go play scared stiff here, you know, where uh, you, you get 30 to 60 seconds on it. But moving right along, but yeah, I also, I also like Elvira and all the boy, you know, all the lines and. But um. Oh, another thing I should mention. With this here, I'm also referring to the naughty mode, not the family friendly friendly mode. If that were the case, I'd have dropped that sucker down to three. I mean, especially these days. To me, this should have been part of an up. This should have been part of an update, part of a pinball arcade update. Just, just get rid of the family-friendly mode, and just put naughty mode in there. It's 2018. You know we're, you know we're talking about we're talking about vaginas and money shots casually now. You know, it's pretty much mainstream. Porn is, for the most part, mainstream. You might as well just. You might as well just allow allow naughty mode now. You're not you know you're not offending anybody anymore. I mean I I understand authenticity or not. I mean I understand authenticity and all, but not these days. Just make it an option to turn it on and off. But moving along, sorcerer three. The table overall. Um, it uses recycled sound effects from uh, Space Shuttle and uh, and Black Knight, so that's kind of a turn off. Uh, but uh, aside from that, one big tragic flaw this table has: that left slingshot is right in the path of the uh, of the left loop. So I've had many many a ball bang get deflected right out that slingshot after going down the going down the loop. So it no, it's. It's basically like Pinbot. It's to where uh, I have to uh, I have to avoid that left loop at all costs, otherwise it's gonna hit that slingshot and go off randomly. So, uh, space shuttle. I'll give it a I'll give it a six just on nostalgia. This is another table I used to play when I was a teenager. This is also a table I used to play on the PS4. I mean, I own that. I own this freaking game on the PS4. Um, that being said, I probably would have given it a seven or an eight. On the computer, however, six. But I swear they stick mag. They got a magnet over on the right outlay. It almost always goes out over there. Um, left left lane, not so much. So it. Not to mention, in order to relight the airlock, you got to have a. It's a, it's a master, it's a master shot, straight for the uh, drop targets, especially if you're trying to sweep them, like try to hit all three of them at once. You're gonna have, you're gonna need to be a freaking sharpshooter for that. But, went along, Spanish eyes. Ten, just like Central Park. Um, nudging, ball manipulation is vital. You got a bumper right there, right smack between the flippers. 
So you you really have to make a momentary judgment call. Do you do you nudge the table or do you just go ahead and let the bumper let the bumper hit the ball wherever? Hit the ball wherever you think it's gonna go. So Um backhanding, backhanding your shots is also vital. Cause you might need to get you might need to get these specific targets over here. But with the right flipper, it's impossible to do on the right flipper. I mean there's a big turnaround and a big saucer and it blocks the blocks the way. And um forehanding the left flip forehanding the left flipper is just gonna put it on the wall. So you have to be you have to uh, learn the art of backhanding shots in order to do this. So that and I freaking love the artwork. It's to me, it's totally revolutionary. I've never seen anything like it. I don't know who did it, but he needs a big time pat on the back because I've never seen artwork. I've never seen that kind of artwork in any other table. So. Uh, talking myself horse here. Uh, Starship Troopers. Er, I'll give it a two. Same thing here. Just it's just overall suckiness. Um, voices, sounds, uh, gameplay. Any one other reason here? Same issue I had with Paragon. It's got a, it's got the asymmetrical flipper. It's just really, really, it's really goofy, weird, seems unnecessary. So it really detracts from it. I don't think it was as bad as Paragon. With Paragon, oh, that was another thing with uh, Central Park and Spanish Eyes. Flipper timing is also essential. If you uh, time your flip too early, the ball slips under and goes out. There's out lanes underneath the flippers. Same thing with Paragon. You have a two flippers on the right side. If you um, if you time the flip wrong, or if you time it where the ball's at a bad spot, ball slips right through. So now that I think about that, I'll up that to three. But most of the bad stuff still stands. It's it's trying to be everywhere at once, and it ends up going nowhere. Glad my computer hasn't restarted. Going good so far. Uh, Star Trek Next Generation. I'll five it. I have gotten a decent score on here, eight billion. But I don't. That's the kind of score you don't get very often on this table. Probably one of the biggest reasons why it, it has a it has a firepower it has a firepower kickback, although it's not as bad. At least on this table here, when uh when you roll over the kickback, it still stays on for several seconds. Whereas uh firepower it doesn't. The moment the moment it kicks in, it kicks off. So. Um. Uh, Swords of Fury, I'll give this a six. But this ease, this table easily would have gotten a nine. But big issue I got with this is there needs to be a way to turn off the flipper noise. That, that really gets on my freaking nerves. I mean, they need a... There needs to be an option to shut that off. If, if they do that, this table would easily have gotten a 9. Possibly even a 10 if I was in a good mood. I mean, medieval theme, the frickin' awesome music. Just hearing the Lion Man! Lion Man! Roar! I mean, just hearing that alone is like, whoa! You know, um, Tales of the Arabian Nights. If I remember to, I'm going to give it the same rating as I did 
a theater of magic. It's an overall above average table. Um, just a lot of things worked on it. Nothing I can really, nothing really worth singling out. Ah, uh, taxi. I'll just give it a five, uh, just based on the nostalgia factor. Um, one thing, this is another table that really needs a ball save. It's got an intriguing skill shot. This is one of those where you don't want to get you don't want to get the best score on the skill shot. You want to get the middle ground that spots a passenger. That actually helps the gameplay a lot. I don't recall any other tables with skill shots that had that. Um, another thing that mars it is, uh, like I said with Hurricane, there's going to be times when the ball comes out of the ramps, pew, flies right past the flipper, and you'll never see it coming. But other times, doo -doo -doo, it just goes down like normal. It really throws off my timing and puts me in a defensive mode. Uh, cheat off. I'll give that a... I'll give it an 8. I think it's the first table I can think of based on Caddyshack. I don't know which came first, though. Cheat off or uh, no good gophers. But, um... This is one of those... Um... Shot making's kind of weird. The lighting's kind of goofy. You're going to have trouble seeing some things. It's a little bit on the complex side. But, um, the voices, the music, um, sound effects overall, they're all pretty good. Um, but yeah. That's all I can think of on that. Uh, Terminator 2, Judgment Day. At least the pinball arcade version. I don't. I haven't played a real version in many, many years. This is. This was another one that I used to play. Used to play. Um. I think I was in my twenties. Trying to think. Probably my. Uh, probably around my mid twenties. There was a pizza parlor that uh, I would eat at. Like every so often, that had this table in there. But I'm trying to think, though. Um, on Pinball Arcade, it has probably the worst ramps I've ever seen. The right one is super steep. And the left one is way at the back. So, if you're... Not to mention the flippers are fairly weak. So, if you're not... If you don't hit that flipper shot perfectly, the ball's not going to go all the way up the ramp, or it's not going to go all the way up the left ramp because of how far back it is. So... It, you got to have a pinpoint accuracy with the flippers to pinpoint to me. Um, so that alone really mars this table. But like I said, I haven't played the real life version in many years. It might have been better. I mean, but I haven't. So if I was actually playing the real life table th these days, I might actually give it a higher rating. But I'll go on that. Theater of Magic, same as Theater of Magic. Um, possibly, I want to say Tales of the Arabian Nights too, but something up here is keeping me from saying it. But Theater of Magic is probably my most consistent table. Very rarely do I have a bad game, but very rarely do I have a super awesome game on it. But I always see, I always perform consistently on it. That's not something I can say about a lot of other tables. You know, a lot of them I do just bad dog terrible, and then once in a while I do super exceptional on for some odd reason. But the, not with theater and magic though. I'll always do at least decent on it. Um, Twilight Zone. Uh, I'll give this one a two. It, this is going to be something that runs contrary to most everybody else. Can't get into it. This is another table that really, really needs a ball save. Just to give me a chance to figure out what the hell I'm supposed to be doing on the thing. 
This is especially true when I when I first started playing the table. You, you know, you got gum ball machine here. You got a bunch of other sort of junk over here. You got you got some kind of pyramid thingy over here. You got bumpers over here. You got some kind of skill shot thingy over here. It's you know, I'd like to have a ball set to figure out what the hell I'm supposed to be doing. You know, but otherwise, scoring is too. But otherwise, overall, everything else is just really goofy. It's hard to make, hard to make head or tail out of. But so, I'm, it's getting a two. Now, TX Sector, on the other hand, flat out ten, my all-time favorite table right here, because everything worked. It, that's in a word, everything. It, sound, gameplay, theme. Um, I first started playing this table. I'm like, oh! It just, everything clicked. So, automatic flat out 10 for me. Um, victory. I'll give it a 7. I could have given this an 8. But kind of an interesting concept. The whole table is basically just a series of hurry-ups. So this is one of those where it's not a this isn't a this isn't a this isn't a catch and cradle happy happy game like some other tables. They're they're all hurry ups, so you have to you can't take your time with this one. You have to hit the hurry ups quick. Um but one thing that uh Mars it is a uh, the ever annoying upper left upper left spinner shot. And then they got a they got a ramp right next to it that you have to get, but oftentimes can't because you keep hitting the uh, hitting that left spinner. It just gets really annoying. So they needed to do something like separate the spinner and ramp or something. Make it so the uh, maybe make it so you can hit the uh, left ramp with the left flipper. Not that I've actually tried, but I don't. Where it's positioned and stuff, I couldn't really see backhanding it from the left flipper. But, yeah. Otherwise, pretty much above average. It is marred by that. Uh, Whirlwind. I'll give it a four. Mm, it's... I guess uh, probably the big drawback. I could probably say the same thing about a uh, Black Rose, too. It's got kind of a pointless skill shot. A lot of times I just end up avoiding it or not even shooting it entirely because of uh if you don't if you don't plunge it perfectly, you risk the ball going straight down the middle. Straight down the middle or heading over here in the in and out lanes. And you better hope you get lucky. And white water. Same with um, same with one of those other tables. I'll give it an eight, mainly because it doesn't have a seven point five. But it's another pretty above average, pretty good table. Um, trying to there was there's oh that was it that was it okay, all right I I see it all clearly now, going down to five. Just like Pinbot, um, you want to keep the ball out of the bumpers. Especially more so because the bumpers are completely covered. You can't even see what the ball is doing in there. Just when it comes out, which could end up in the out lane, could end up going straight down the middle. Um, I think I've actually seen it bounce off the right slingshot, going into the right out lane too. I've seen that happen. So, this forces me to have to avoid making the left loop, which goes into the bumpers. I also have to avoid uh, I have to avoid flipping it when it's on the tip of the le left flipper, otherwise I risk it going into the bumpers. So I, if I have to avoid making a certain shot or avoid a certain area, that's a turnoff. So, so it's, it's getting a five and not an eight. Uh, who done it? Given that, given that that another eight, given that an eight, but a uh, game. Table-wise, 
eh, nothing you can really put your finger on. Average. Um, the guy who does the voice of the detective is the same guy who does the voice of the announcer in NBA Jam. I'm sitting here trying to trying to imagine how the hell did he pull that off? Going from that voice to this voice? Jesus Christ, the guy is freaking awesome. Um, that no, it's got a pretty good ball save. It's in a pretty effective ball save. Because when you shoot the ball, it comes... There's kind of a whirlwind skill shot. You don't have... Where boing, you can bounce it off and the ball goes down to the Clippers fairly quickly. When While the ball save is actually still useful. I've seen ball saves where uh, it starts the moment you punch the ball. And then by the time the ball actually even gets down there, it's run out. You know, kind of pointless having it. Excuse me. Uh, wild card. I'm giving it a five, but I've only played it a few times. Maybe two or three. Uh, maybe getting some more plays under my belt, learning more about the table, I might raise the rating. But until then, this is this is my quick capsule rating right here. Uh, same with Wipeout. I'd probably give this a four. Just the voices, it it sounded like they were all done by one guy. Um, kind of like, kind of like Star. One of these other ones, I can't remember which one off the top, off the top of my head, but it sounded like they were all done by one guy. Ripley's, that's what it was. Like they hired a guy right off the street and did all the guy voices and. The ski lift is now open. Race you to the bottom. You know. Um. World champion soccer, giving that a four. And once again, same guy who does the voice of Bob, NBA Jam, and who done it, also done this one. And if you've ever played NFL Blitz at all, you'll recognize the voice immediately. The reason I give it a four, though, is um. It kind of like Twilight Zone. There's too much junk, too much weird, goofy stuff that obscures the ball. Um, and one big uh, design flaw. I think it's off the ramp, possibly the loop. I can't remember which. It ricochets off straight into the left out lane. No table should have that. I can't remember which shot it was, but it's probably gonna be one of those that I how it that I have to avoid. Because I don't want that ball going in that, hitting that whatever it is that's over there and going into the left out lane. So that, that ruins what could have been a, that ruins what probably, probably would have been a seven. But pew, took it down three points because of it. Uh, next table, Zenon. Uh, give me that a not. Okay, wait. Flashback. Bringing that to an eight. Good table, and like lots of other tables, this is one I played back when I was a kid. I don't. I think I was probably. Yeah, I think I was pro I was probably a little kid. I think I was like probably ten or eleven when I first saw this table. Uh, pretty fun table though. Um, I want to say it's a design flaw, but they got a the two slingshots. Because of where they're located, if the ball hits the bottom of them, pew, straight down the middle. It's a very dangerous table. Um, but otherwise, it's that to me is a design flaw. Like, do you need to re-angle the slingshots or something or move them a little bit to where the ball doesn't hit straight down the middle when it hits the bottom, when it hits the uh, bottom slingshot bumper I post, I guess you can call it that. But otherwise, I love the drop targets. They're they're practically made of paper. You can, um, I haven't done it, but I've heard about being able to be done. Hitting the hitting the very drop, the very drop, the very top drop target of the bank and pew, 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 taking down all four at once, basically sweeping them. I've done as many as three of them. It'll pew 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 and then bounce off. 
I've done that several times. But, yeah. What? Well, there's... There's my ratings. You got it. I got none to hide. So, let me click submit. And, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to have a lot... I'm pretty sure I'm probably going to be uh, going against the grain on a lot of these. Wait, let me see. Hour and a half? Oh, wow. Okay. I didn't know I was on that long. Um. Okay, it seems I've gone on too long. Jeez, time sure flies. Uh, but I'll go ahead and cut it off here. Um. Or, let me let me do this. I'll do it quickly. Mine. Yeah, we're all in pretty much agreement. Attack from Mars, yours average. Pretty much in agreement. <laughs> I got a four. Everybody else got almost a nine. Nope. All right, pretty much in agreement there. Gave it a two. Told you. I've got a lot of unpopular opinions on this. Adam's family, same thing. We're about the same on that. Star Trek Next Gen. Whitewater, same thing there. Same thing there. Oh, we're about an agreement on that. About an agreement on that. I seem to like no good gophers more than most other most other people. Uh, fishtails? Oh, we're in agreement. Yep. I'm the wrong opinion on this one, but it looks like nobody really... Not many people gave much an opinion on that, though. Uh, Getaway, couldn't rate that one. Circus Voltaire? Pretty unpopular. Uh, slightly unpopular. Slightly unpopular there. Uh, we're about in agreement. In agreement on there. <laughs> Very unpopular there. Uh, Indy 500. Uh, a little unpopular. And another unpopular one there too. I seem to like this table more than uh, more than a lot of other people. Same thing here. Or no. Man, not popular here either. I'm a loner, Dottie. A rebel. A slight disagreement there. Same thing here. I think this here is uh, more of the show. I don't get it. <laughs> Boy, everybody seemed to love this one. Maybe if they would have fixed that left slingshot right, I probably would have liked it too. Uh... <laughs> Pretty unpopular there, pretty unpopular there. Oh, we're almost in agreement here. Couldn't play this one, too graphics intensive. Uh. I'm one of the few here. Kind of the same. Well, we almost agree here. Uh. Yeah. Unpopular. Damn, we're almost in agreement right here. A point oh point zero four difference. Uh, uh, uh. Boy, I am a rebel. I like these two tables a lot more than everybody else did. A uh, slight disagreement. Uh, seems we almost agree on this one. Um, these days, I like this table more than everybody else, but, uh, back when I first played this, my, my rating was probably the same as everybody else's. High speed? Uh, slight disagreement. Uh, yeah, like, but like I said, I shouldn't have to avoid making certain shots, so... That's a big turnoff. 
Plus, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but uh, the left flipper, it's almost pointless in even having it. The only thing I've used it for is maybe trying to backhand the left ramp, but that's about it. Hitting the chest targets. Uh, kind of the same thing here. Bit of a disagreement. Centaur. Well, seem not like it more than a lot of other people, but I probably have slightly different reasons for doing it, too. Uh, Swords of Fury? We're, uh, we're about agreement. Pretty big disagreement here. Well, maybe they'd uh, balanced out the in and out lanes a little bit. I'd, I'd probably have the same rating, too. Frankenstein? Hmm, slight disagreement. Well, seems we almost agree on this. Elvira and the Party Monsters? Almost the same thing. Well, same thing here. If they would, uh, if they had fixed the ramps so that our, or specifically the exits of the ramps so they're consistent, I'd probably have a higher rating too. Ah, uh, Paragon. Paragon, eh, it's got different strokes for different folks on here. But then again, only 86 people voted on this. I think Paragon was a fairly recent addition, so. Uh, firepower. Seemed to like liked it a little more than... Yeah, this is another one. This is another recent addition. A 14 Tomcat. A slight disagreement. Xenon. Uh, slight disagreement here. Oh, we're almost in agreement right here. Uh, Flight 2000. Something I wanted to say about this, I forgot. But slight disagreement. Slightly disagree on these. We're well, we're almost in agreement on this. Uh, wild card. I haven't played this one enough to really give it a accurate rating. But then again, not many people have played this one either. Uh, teed off. Slight disagreement. Big shot. Different strokes for different folks. Uh, almost the same thing here. And here. <laughs> oh my god, I stand alone here. Oh my, but then again, we're almost in total agreement here. Same thing here. Kind of stand alone here too, but then again, it's not like everybody else liked the table a whole lot more either. Black hole. Oh my god. It's like we're all of one mind on this. Eh, a bit of a disagreement. And same thing here. Uh, centigrade 37. But yeah, it looks like you guys are pretty much getting the gist here. Surprisingly, though, I'm seeing a fair, I'm seeing a lot more agreements than I was, I was anticipating. Or, uh, must be, must be one of the few here. But yeah. Fireball? I don't think they know what they're missing. Unless you guys have been, uh, unless these people are a lot older than me or something. Been playing pinball since the 20s. You know, something I don't. Same thing here. I'm guessing, uh, 263 people probably find this table to be boring. Whereas I find it relaxing. At least here on the bottom. It's like we're almost in agreement on this. <laughs> I see so I see something about these tables that most people don't, apparently. Well, kinda 
kind of, to be fair, only 50 people rated this one. So this is still a fairly new addition. Maybe if more people play this one, it might act, rating might actually go up. But Central Park, yep, I stand alone. Call it a quirk. Okay, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off. Um, I'm, I'm very, very sorry about this going on an hour and 45 minutes. Uh, I guess like the whole saying goes, time flies when you're having fun. But if I didn't, if I'd have remember, if I'd have remember to, I would have gone into the kitchen and grabbed my egg timer, brought it over here, set it to about an hour, and limited myself to that. But I'll go ahead and shut it down now. So, besides, I'm running late, I got errands, I gotta run, I'm gonna go eat lunch and all that, so I'm, to be fair, I'm hurting myself as well. So, but, I should, but, hang on, I'm babbling. I should be on later on tonight, uh, 6 to 6.30 p.m. U.S. Central Time, uh, June 25th, to stream Path of Exile. But until then, take care, and once again, my apologies.